network session by sipping thoughts today we are uh, discussing a very important and interesting topic interview basics how to get ready for an interview how to succeed in an interview and uh, to uh, discuss this topic i have with me a very interesting panel today first of all i have pradanya punekar who is a founder and a career coach she founded a global online platform named katha stories unheard which basically aims to give opportunity to women and entrepreneurs to share their stories and speak their voices uh, alongside uh, she has a vision to inspire educate empower and develop women professionals around the world she has been seasoned human resource uh, professional for 12 years with 12 years of uh, work experience in a global corporate organization she is also a winner of miss uh, india uk 2017 welcome Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much for having me, and thanks to the entire team of Sipping Thoughts for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you all. Yeah. Um, uh, next up, I have with me Aparna Gautam, who's a sales and marketing professional turned career coach, uh, with more than eleven years of professional experience. She has impacted more than three thousand lives in, across more than eleven countries. She went full time into coaching in January twenty twenty, which is quite another very interesting fact about her. Welcome, Aparna. Thank you so much, and again, once again, thank you, Sipping Thoughts, for reaching out. Super excited to be doing this today. Yeah. Very relevant topic, indeed. And uh, lastly, I would like to introduce you all to uh, Miss Meeta Gudgudia, who is the co-founder of Sipping Thoughts and co-founder of Ferns and Petals. She'll be taking this conversation forward with our panelists. Thank you, Ashita. Uh, welcome, Pradanya. Welcome, Aparna. It's so good to have you here because. any kind of a conversation when we do we go into a lot of uh, research and planning who are the right people who will uh, kind of add perspective to it so this is how you both are here so our audience also know that we do a lot and lot and lot of ground work before bringing a session to you so that is how we are here i am doing a proxy for my another uh, A host who is not who is absent. Normally, the show is hosted by Sneha Bhuvna. She is from Germany, and uh, because of her work pressure, she has been busy. So I am here. Uh, normally, I don't take work session. Uh, but anyways, this topic again. I don't know where to start from. So this uh, question is always there. I have been interviewing people all my life, and sometimes some I always feel that. How do I say that? you don't know what was that one thing that kind of clicked and you hired that person and you always think he maybe the other two also had the potential but appeal to me or they didn't pass the interview so this has been a nagging question to me always that uh, what was it that got one person across the table and that the other person didn't pass and youngsters they are just out of the college they are not taught in the college about how to give an interview i've never seen that anybody is taught professionally to how to give an interview you don't know how do you lose that opportunity in your life mm -hmm. so i want to ask you both uh, how what do you say about it um okay should i should i take it pradanya before yes please go ahead yeah. aparna sure because uh, i mean having been sitting on both sides of the table i have given interviews and taken during my sales and marketing career and during my career coaching stint obviously training a lot of people so uh, it's very interesting when you know and and i can resonate so well that sometimes you realize okay what was that one reason why you know this person got hired and i think the only thing that i've always come back to is the energy when uh, you know the person has come in and the way they've answered sometimes it's not even adding a lot of points to that you know whether they knew all the answers perfectly and whether they you know spoke correct grammar and you know all of that of course uh, you know adds a lot of pointers but sometimes when you have uh, very similar candidates i think the energy with which they come in the passion that with which they are uh, putting forth their answers and the confidence as well it just shows it just puts this person uh, you know way ahead of everybody else you know from the moment they enter the room or even if it's a virtual uh, interview i think these are some of the factors that really uh, makes an interviewer kind of even you know sit right and take notice when sometimes when you have many many interviews to do i think this really stands out according to me i would love to hear about pradanya has to add <laughs> like like aparna rightly said right uh, i even i have been on both the sides of the table 
uh, having given interviews and having taking interviews, especially because I've been in HR for uh, about 12 years now, worked in various organizations. Uh, what is that one factor that I think according to me, uh, there are possibly there are a lot of factors, definitely, but the top three factors that I would possibly, you know, would like to share is that it really brings me back to one of the a very important aspect, which was, which has stayed with me for a very long time. That was said by Harsha Bhogle, who's a cricket commentator. He said the first is the attitude, right? So in one of his uh, one of his videos, he had said that in the entire world, everybody has the ability and capacity to acquire skills, to learn a lot of things, to upskill and uh, bring themselves to the power of the job that the employer is looking at. But what employers really look at is your attitude, right? How I mean, and like Aparna rightly said, your energy of go from what you bring that attitudes can be felt by the interviewer. Okay, so I think with that attitude there are a lot of aspects of how you connect with them, the kind of relationship that you build with them, the curiosity and the ambition that you show. So these are subtle things, but can be very evident in an interview. The second aspect that I would really want to highlight over here, especially for the youngsters is that somebody, if they would have told me at a very young age would be really nice, but your purpose. It's extremely important to highlight or probably for that it takes a lot of reflection that you have to do for yourself right why do you want that job you're answering your why you know that purpose which is there it's very important that is what will actually make you stand out and which is why for somebody who is able to uh, share their vision or the purpose for that job or the role is there for the interviewer and the employer um they would resonate or connect with that person a little more than the other people who might be technically really sound, technically really great. Uh, that's the second aspect. The third aspect is that everybody, like you know, I said, Harsha Bhogle, can really learn, upskill, read. But one thing that will really make you stand out is the passion that you take for your job. You know how passionate you are to do that job to be able to help the company achieve their goal and the vision through the role that they're looking at. So these are the three aspects which I think um, are very critical and crucial. So very good. We talked about passion, purpose, and uh, passion for attitude. 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 Yeah, sorry. So, okay, now um, how in a one meeting one can, uh, um, express the passion, purpose, and attitude. Give me any example. Suppose somebody comes for a executive assistance job or a HR job or a sales job in different situations. Uh, it's, it's how a, a young person can, can we have an um, example? Like uh, for so any I, kind of a particular I, job. Yeah, that's that's a that's a very very valid uh, point and a question, Meeta, as you rightly said, right? So when I say attitude, um, what what I I mean, what people are really looking at the ability to connect with another person, right? I think the ability to possibly uh, connect at different levels apart from work, right? Uh, it could be possibly you know talking about so and how how you actually do it is that the way you are started with a small icebreaker. Right, uh, especially in the virtual world, uh, during the COVID times, what I have realized is people have become very sensitive. Right, so jumping to straight to the work aspect is something not really appeals to a lot of people. Trying and understanding how their family is doing, are their families doing really well? These are some of the things which we forget uh, because of you know feeling pressurized. Right, trying and understanding because. The fact that the inter person who is interviewing you is also a human being, right? So trying and understanding um, how his or her family is doing, connecting with that person on the level apart from work, which is, uh, which is which could be related to family, which could be related to hobbies, and bringing forward that attitude of being able to trust and uh, you know being able to be transparent is something which by sharing your your life lessons by sharing how you have dealt with situations very openly i think these are some of the things that you can 
bring forward that attitude of uh, you know trust and curiosity and ambition through a job right uh, now talking about the passion which is there i think it's important through the interview to share one or two vision that you have mm. right so just to give an example which uh, which i probably would want to share uh, as as an um, uh, you know as a part of my ambition so when i moved to london uh, obviously i i ha- i started looking out for a job in hr specifically right and uh, because i was coming from india it's a different completely job market altogether it's not the same job market now it was and over here in london specifically there is something called cipd which is looked at specifically for hrs right now the most important factor which i would want to highlight over here is uh, a lot of our employers do not employ people uh, hr people who are not cipd qualified mm-hmm. but i was not cipd qualified it was important for me to bring forward the the kind of work i have done for the past whatever years when i moved which is about 8 years there back then and talk about case studies specifically right now that kind of really shows how passionately you have driven talk about analytics through your work just don't talk about qualitative measures everybody talks about qualitative measures how many people have you recruited in what in what uh, shorter span of time have you done that how have you been able to increase the percentage of engagement level i'm talking more from an hr perspective it's different for different people like it people you know everybody will have different but every job role will have qualitative measures right how much so when i joined the organization what was the engagement level and after my initiatives or work what was the engagement level which was increased talk about the quantitative measures and differences you have got through your work that really shows about your passion second important aspect why we want to show is these days especially in today's world employers are really looking at something you have done over and above your work right it is not just a day to day job and you know how you contribute uh i think they are also looking at uh how passion so when i talk about passion you know have you been publishing few blogs writing about it talking about it how do you kind of you know that so that kind of really shows if you have done that it's important to talk about it through the interview bring forward to your employer and talk about it so this is some of the groundwork that you have to build uh, when i talk about these things Uh, I love what Danya said, and I think just to add to the bit where you know how in one conversation does passion, attitude, uh, you know, and purpose come about. Uh, probably giving an example at this point, and this is where I was getting interviewed for one of the media companies that I was working in while uh, during my sales and marketing stint, and I that's one experience that I vividly remember as to how. an interview stopped being an interview and it became such a fun conversation like where the person who was interviewing me and uh, you know me sitting on the other side it was a marketing role and suddenly we are talking about uh, mintra's strategy for increasing uh, you know their sales and and their uh, you know reducing re- returns and stuff like that and suddenly i didn't feel that i was getting evaluated i just already felt that i have i have joined and there was this beautiful conversation and the energy with which it was exchanged i think that's when the passion purpose and i think everything came out because suddenly for both of us and we we discussed this after obviously i got hired and we discussed this after and she said that the energy that i felt i think after this nothing else mattered and the very unique thing about that was that her role was particularly created she didn't even uh, you know um, how do i say it she was interviewing candidates uh, head of strategy back then and uh, after the interview was done just because the resonance and the energy and the passion came about she said that you know we created like a whole different role for you because this is where it was a fit so amazing things happen when your you know passion comes across uh, during interview so i'm just adding to what pradanya said she's also no, covered a lot of it no i understand it very uh, like correctly and what happens ki most of the people when they are going with the basic like these these are uh, some rare situations where the energy is meet or your the job is created but most of the time people go with the very set format in mind yeah. okay this these questions will be asked this kind of answer so my experience is like whenever i have interviewed people uh, i don't know what was it that the certain mm-hmm. role certain things that clicked so recently i hired somebody she said ma'am you have to give me a lot of support 
Hmm. I will give my best, but I'll give you. A, you have to give. You have to be patient with me. You have to teach me. I still hired her because somewhere I felt that the, uh, uh, how do you call it? The energy to uh, the intention to to learn is there. The intention yeah. to walk yeah. a trail is there. So but the basic ninety nine percent of the people they are not. So they these are luck. These are fluke. that maybe out of those 10 minutes interview you found that one thing that connected what if yeah, that yeah. connect was not there so basically when somebody is going for interview i have uh, i have seen that maybe uh, from carrying a bag how you are carrying a bag how you are showing something on your mobile how you are carrying your paper or you uh, forgot your uh, documents home you you have not delivered on time a project report has to be delivered sometimes they don't know about the background of the company no. sometimes they don't even know that what job are they giving interview for because my company is a big company so they just know that we connected with hr so i have seen many 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 kind of a uh, uh, situations where i felt that oh i wish these people had some training and they could come prepared for the interview better and maybe they all were talented but it just that they were not hired because of some small things maybe a very uh, like long, i'm like this is a women's platform so i can say about it like a very long nails painted bright color and if you are working on the laptop in front of me showing something and it's not coming across as a very professional uh, body language or kind of something that is meant for uh, um, so uh, opening the door not uh, putting the chair back True. so bigger thing they still learn but these small nuances i feel is a big 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 uh, kind of a put off or a, uh, getting the job or not getting the job also nobody tells you that uh, i am not giving you job but somehow the first what i am coming to that first appearance of the job has it plays in the in the mind of the other person who is interviewing Yes. so what should we do that is my uh, apart from structural training these are the how do we train people tell people that th- this is also important so sure. um see obviously there's a lot of uh, you know content available at the end of the day it's the intention that uh, interview skill is a interviewing is a skill just like any other skill you know today but when it comes to interviewing job search uh, sometimes we take it for granted we just make sure that okay i i do see a lot of people going through the company's website and i do see that okay fine these are probably the top questions i also do see people uh, you know now networking is is growing a little bit but i i i love what you're saying in terms of these finer nuances i remember uh, one time i was interviewing and this candidate it was this candidate's birthday on that day and you will not believe that twice she walked out of the interview uh, saying that it's a wish and i have to take it so um, you know and again so things like this so how do we do it is of course uh, you know at a college level it has to be because i know there's a boom in the coaching industry i know there are a lot of career coaches now and a lot of support is available which was not there earlier but at the end of the day uh, at a school and college level this needs to be addressed and uh, spoken about so uh, i know that during placements uh, some of these topics get addressed but i do see there's a lot of limitation to again top questions and you know company research and and the larger aspects of the interview but these smaller aspects in terms of the softer skills of how you make sure that you know you're creating a good impression you're going in uh, making sure and that that first 5 seconds 15 seconds 1 minute what's going on are you fidgeting are you nervous are you you know again i very rightly said you know where to place the bag if, if it's a face to face thing i remember my very first interview i was not sure whether to take my bag or shake this person's hand like he had mm-hmm. extended his hand and it was my very first experience and i shook his hand and i was but i know i was super clumsy in that moment i got hired though again thankfully it was uh, it was a good opportunity but then when i came out i was super nervous i was like okay wait i really messed it up i think the last thing because i was clumsy probably they're not going to take me so definitely a lot of awareness needs to be uh, you know done at a, at a college level is what i definitely feel uh, pradanya could definitely i'd love to hear about chia's sister i think uh, aparna you have probably covered most of the points that i wanted to share specifically you know uh, meeta like you rightly said these are some of the minor things 
which are so subtle, but yet they are get observed. How do you pull the chair? Do you close the door? Do you hold the door for the person to come in? Um, if there is a glass of water which is kept and there's a lid over it, do you put the lid back, right? When people drink water and has a lid, put it back. So uh, at different levels, obviously, as we go through, grow through our career, because you have given interviews so many times, maybe you learn. But what I've also realized is that a lot of times, some of these things which were not available for, easily available for us during our times, you know, especially when we came out of college to campus interviews, they are available now. Like, um, uh, like Aparna is a career coach. I have been a career coach. There are a lot many organizations and people now who teach these certain aspects which are important to uh, when you go for an interview. Where do you, do you give your, I mean, these days maybe resume giving is not a thing, but how do you hand over your resume to the person? I still remember there was a huge article I had read on how to shake a hand. And uh, I, 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 there were so many different aspects also to, you know, just shaking a hand and how interviewers judge your attitude. And, you know, Meeta rightly, rightly asked me, how in 10 minutes do you understand the attitude of a person? Maybe it is also judged through the way you shake your hands. The second is the eye contact you do with the person. Do you have eye contact or no, right? A lot of times people also talk about shoulder postures, right? You know, when I was doing for Mrs. India, <laughs> when I was participating in Mrs. India, there was a body language thing, Nita, where they were told that, you know, if you droop your shoulders and your shoulders back, you know, really show a lot of whether you're interested in or not. Now, especially because this is a women's forum, I had also seen very recently how a woman sits, you know, with her legs crossed or legs, you know, how a woman should actually sit in an interview makes a lot of difference of even if she's wearing short dresses, like short clothes, right? How do you actually sit nicely so that it's, it comes across as a very um, nice, gentle posture. These are certain things which, um, that, so, so one, there's a lot of content which is already available on the website. So please do read up to the content. Second, there are a lot many individuals like upper, I mean, a lot many career coaches, people who uh, help you with the interview, network with them and ask them, can I, can you please become my mentor? because I'm going to be interviewing, people are very happy these days to mentor you even without money. I'm repeating it. You need not actually pay money for career coaches and big things. No. In your, within your own organizations, you will have a lot of networks. Go ask them. Please feel free to ask. I want to be mentored because I'm giving an interview. Can you please help me? Third, uh, of course, you know, do a bit of a research reading up and all that. And fourth, be very honest with yourself. This is what I have. This is what and this is where I need to be in terms of giving it. Fill that gap, right? Um, I just want to quote one, one really small uh, situation which I came across. Such an embarrassing moment, Nita, I tell you. When I was interviewing with Flipkart, back then when Flipkart was a startup in India, uh, and I went for an interview. They called me for an interview. I went to them. And I was on my final round of interview. I had, my, um, I had put my iPods on. Uh, the headset was on and everything was on. I entered the room and to my bag, I had completely forgotten to turn off the iPod. The music was really loud and the music could be heard in the entire interview room. And the, the point is that after a point in time, you know, it's like it was so loud, the interview actually ended up asking me, is that your music? And then I realized at that point in time that yes, it was, it was my music which is on. I said, can you please give me one minute? It is my music and I have to turn it off. So I put, I just bent down. I took it off from my, my handbag and turned off the music. And I looked straight into the interviewer's eyes. And I said, I'm really sorry. I am a music lover. I really love music. It helps me to help keep me away from my stress buster. And I was very honest. I was very honest. I came out, I came back home and I told my husband, I'm not going to get a job because this is what happened in the interview. Mm -hmm. To my surprise, I got a job much more to a higher level than what was offered to me. The salary was much more higher than what was been told to me. And I was surprised. But the fact that I'm trying to say is that I was very honest. I did say I, I love music. Music is my passion and I'm a music lover. So, so uh, yeah, uh, my next question that normally resumes, resumes are very, very long. 
believe me i take interviews and until and if the moment i see long papers i when i have to sit across the table or do a zoom interview then i start looking at it again and it is it is not a very um, you don't feel that you want to give that much time to reading and going through all you just want a synopsis of what you did where you did what do you want and so my question is that how long the resume should be we will have a separate session it's a, in itself a big chapter but what is your take both of you what is your take on resume is um and another thing i want to add to it uh, when i see somebody changing job every 2 years i i immediately the first question that comes to my mind is the person is looking for uh, uh, bringing making its profile it's like it's not going to be a very permanent um, uh, asset with me or an employee with me yeah. so i immediately the first thing that comes is a question mark should i hire because mm-hmm. six months it takes time to train to tell every learn everything about the company another one and a half year somebody will work and then the person will go so so again now let let me ask this about his resumes yeah so pradhanya you take it give your about this that so um i think uh, i would possibly like you rightly mentioned that nobody really wants to read these days uh, three four pages resume and which is why there's something called a cover cover letter which is there cover letter should be really really uh, short more not more than two or three three paragraphs um in that it should really cover again i would want to go back to one of the point which i made earlier was the quantitative aspect every job in every resume it is as we write they, those are words which we write right through the words you are not able to much, give much information it's very subtle when you say ambitious what is ambition right when you say passion what is passion because those are left to people for people to judge on their own basis so it's important to write if you are in sales and marketing what's the percentage of sales you have increased in say one year or year on year that you have increased right uh what is the how have you contributed towards increasing the revenue of the organization writing those numbers gives a very very uh, clear picture of how good you are at your work right and what what period of time um, you have been able to achieve your goals or how have you contributed towards a uh, company achieving its specific goals in numbers specifically so i think that is important to cover in the first few paragraphs which is there um and in that in that paragraph you really have to like meeta you rightly said somebody uh, when you interviewed the person she said that she wants a lot of support and you felt it was very honest because she was very open to learning right so these are some of the things that you you write about yourself in terms of your which speak about your attitude basically how open you are for learning how ambitious you are how curious you are in terms of especially now in zoom a lot of people what they are looking at a lot of employers you have to be self motivated every single day because you're not in the organization nobody is overlooking your boss is not going to come and ask you is the work done have you completed the work you have to really show that you are self motivated and self organized right so, so i i think this because especially for women you know especially for mothers i am a mother of two young boys a uh, lot of employers will be like oh well she is going to be working from home she has two young kids you have to somewhere show that you are self organized no matter what is happening in your house it's not going to affect your productivity something which you will have to uh, in some way bring forward through one or two lines you know that self organized part especially in the zoom thing uh, this this is something which we are not used to it but uh, i think which you have to start uh, getting used to uh, these factors the second point which you asked about what happens to somebody who is changing jobs every two years right i think it is important to um, again showcase what is that one or two aspects which you have which have uh, probably triggered or made you curious to change your job is is it is it the development is it because of the you know possibly show it, showing the positive side of it basically you know what is that how can you positively uh, reflect or show 
through your resume no you know pradanya i will appreciate i would appreciate if somebody says clearly that okay this is my uh, road map so every two years i am changing the job because this is what i wanted to learn at this company the second company and with you my goal is two years or three years or five years the, that honesty would get the person the job that uh, whatever there's no harm in changing your job but that clarity is very very important that is what i feel is missing the with the with the youth yeah. they they just feel that they are out of the college and they know everything and uh, right. so yeah so that is what i That's feel true. uh yeah just to add to the resume bit as well uh, what pradanya was saying was that let's uh, get into the reason why we end up receiving four pages seven pages of you know resumes i have personally had like seven page documents coming out and please review and tell me whether this works so two things happen i think one thing probably a lot of us in the room would resonate is that generally uh, how do we update resumes we uh, you know we are done with the job or we are about to look for a new job what we do is we just end up adding the recent most experience and the same document is kind of being shipped to uh, recruiters or at applications and everything the other thing that doesn't happen is that uh, relevance is not checked for so uh, in most cases we are not reading the job description and seeing whether this resume is fit uh you know to the the job that i'm applying for so the same resume kind of keeps getting circulated for whichever i've seen uh, resumes going sales focused resumes going for marketing because i'm not getting uh, something in sales but i do have like a one or two years of marketing in between so let me just see if that goes in so that's you know one of the main reasons why uh, resumes are very descriptive and not being uh, you know customized for relevance and uh, you know loved what what both of you said in terms of uh, you know switching jobs every two years uh, definitely the the vision and and that clarity and that honesty is important but if it has become a pattern where let's say uh, you know four jobs five jobs and not nothing less more than two years and okay one or two times obviously there are reasons and but if it has become a pattern then definitely there's a lot of hesitance sort of uh, resistance to from the interviewer side also to give them something full time and and there's a lot of discussion on that so yeah and i feel exit interviews you have to uh, you should not burn the bridge with your past company because Absolutely. at Absolutely. least in my case i always take the uh, feedback from the previous company the person is coming from so so these are the things people don't keep in mind and uh, uh look at short term things so yeah that's something that uh, and salary negotiation on the table again normally that process is done by hr but i realized that uh, that's again a very catch 22 situation that how much am i asking for how much do i negotiate what do you both have to say on that so i uh, you know prasanna you can take it i'll add so i think um nita again i would specifically want to focus a little bit on women because this platform is for women so sipping thoughts and i am also passionately working towards that especially for women a lot of times what happens is uh because of lot many other aspects which are there not right which play a primary role motherhood household responsibilities chores we feel that uh, you know sometimes we devalue ourselves in terms of money mm-hmm. and i think um, it is about time that a lot of every woman should really stand up and ask for what the her market value is very confidently right i think uh, one doing a bit of a research is important trying and understanding for your job role and your skill set uh, your years of experience what is the job market and what is the uh, pay scale that is being available in the market which is not gender specific not males are getting so much and females will be paid so much no for that job role what is the standard pay scale which is there doesn't matter you're a male or a female because we are all going to be doing that job no matter our gender so one women have to confidently go with that and not have self doubts about it you know oh what if i why should i and those kind of then i uh, so doing that i uh, right yeah sorry so uh, i no go on meeta mm-hmm. 
so i'm saying ki the i was come i came across a few websites where they had mentioned that this job uh, you will uh, you should be so there was a very clear i i should have kept it handy because there for so many job they had written that this kind of experience this kind of a knowledge you should be the market has this kind of a bracket for the salaries mm-hmm. but the moment you do that homework it becomes very easy for it gives you a lot of information to to be confident about asking uh, aparna you were saying something um yeah i was i was yes. just going to add obviously uh, you know women specifically uh, really uh, i don't yeah so i think who's the uh, who's, who's voice is that uh, uh, pradanya is, uh, is there's a lag i think yeah so. there's a lag so i'm not sure if and pradanya screen is frozen is it just for me so uh, but you go on when pradanya yeah is, sure it will get sped i think it's like yeah yeah so uh, i mean i love what pradanya said in terms of uh, women specifically uh, not standing up and asking what you know they deserve and and of course uh, you know all valid points just wanted to add one bit there and this something which was an eye opening moment for me after almost you know working for 10 years in in the corporate is that there's always this word used um, industry standards and uh, you know there's there's this uh, number that floats around a lot that industry standard is 30% and that's it i i've i've seen that happening a lot uh, getting exchanged during interviews uh, but here's where women need to understand and you know of course all genders is that at the end of the day there is no upper limit when it comes to uh, you know you once you've proven your worth don't limit yourself to a 30% you know ask what you deserve and i have seen in fact after being a career coach is when uh, and i hadn't seen it in my corporate uh, career that i have seen my own clients having had 100% hikes so you know literally and and this this happens only if you believe that you can you know ask it and you can negotiate because already there's a lot of self doubt lot of worry whether um you know uh, what if i ask this and they just say no and and i lose the opportunity then what happens right so a lot of this this got a lot to do with our own self worth and our own uh, you know how much value do you place on uh, the dedication and experience and the value and and support or contribution that you bring to the table so i think it it really uh, you know boils down to that and uh, one hack if you know if if anyone's looking for it is always have a range in mind uh, never uh, you know fixate like have a starting point and a bottom line that you know please 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 and if anybody needs a reminder be okay to say no <laughs> you know if if uh, it it doesn't come to a point where you know because you once you've got in the job it's like um, how do i say it it's it's almost like like marriage you're getting in and you're going to commit yourself it's going to be on your profile if uh, at least you're going to spend let's say even if it's few months and the stress of joining leaving looking for new jobs please don't get into it if the salary is not okay uh, don't start from there because it becomes a very strained relationship after because after every three months you're like oh, i took it and they promised it but then now i have to go ask it and they are not ready to give me so there's a lot of salary related stress i've seen in the first six months when all you actually need to be focusing on is to go from probation to confirmation but uh, you're you're focusing on okay when am i when is the right moment of anna to ask for that hike that they promised me during the interview so um, i think just wanted to add to what pradanya was saying no, go on pradanya if you're able to you both that. absolutely said the right thing uh, and i must tell you what reminded me though it's like i have always been working in my own company but back of my mind i always wanted to have a figure in my mind ki if i am giving this much yeah. time whatever the company's revenue is there it's a collective revenue but personal my time input this is the reimbursement i should be uh, knowing that i deserve it yeah. if i don't know what my time's worth is i will not do justice to it or i will always as you both rightly said you will always be in regret I'm not happy and if you're not happy you can't give your best you will always feel yes. why why not this why not yes, yes. that's yes. so true. yeah second yeah. situation i want to tell um, the audience what i felt uh, that i've seen people when they uh, they get their annual increment what happens they they wait for that annual increment they t- uh, leave the job they take up another job to tell the other company that this is uh, 
uh, I am getting uh, this much there. So I need raise, as you rightly said, you both are laughing. So I know that this, so don't, th don't think that the bosses or the, uh, the uh, interviewer is a fool. They understand if you are smart, they are the HR, they are smarter. So I kind of smile at these things that, okay, uh, don't do these things. Think of uh, any job, any career in the long term. Don't play hide and seek with them. Uh, with uh, with work, yeah. No, I think that. Uh, sorry, Aparna. Go on, go on to the next. Loving to hear from you. Please go on. No, so there was one thing that I just wanted to add, especially again going back to uh, women uh, aspect of it. Motherhood plays a very important aspect in all our journey, isn't it? And especially if somebody has consciously chosen to take a motherhood break, like I did with my first one. When you're going back to work, you would be like, oh no, maybe you know what? I should ask for a lesser salary just so that I get a job. Right. Uh, for me, it was straight. I moved from India to UK and it was a completely different, complete shift for me. And at a point in time, I was like, no, wait, I am not going to devalue myself and ask for a lesser salary because I might have out. I must have been out of work. That's fine. But the life skills that I have achieved through motherhood are much more valuable, which I'm going to show at my workplace, the resilience I've built as a mother the patience that I've built as a mother, the understanding capacity which I've built as a mother will help me to build my organizational skills apart from my technical skills as an HR. This is something which every woman has to showcase in the interview and to the employer. There was one person I still remember who came back and asked me, on your LinkedIn, you have said that that was one and a half year gap is for your motherhood and you have explained what you did in motherhood. And he came back and told me, I really appreciate that I've not come across somebody who did like that. I was like, why not? We all want kids. Every family wants kids. Every employer has families. Why is that motherhood aspect considered sidelined from a career of a woman? No. And I think like it is about time women start doing it for ourselves. Because if we don't do it, nobody else is going to do that. So this is something, a very important point which I wanted to bring forward. So it involves a lot of aspects like branding and stuff like that, but yeah, something which I wanted to share. So I think the clarity and the confidence adds a lot. As long as, uh, like, the moment you present the same thing with a lot of clarity, that why, why, and what it 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 really changes the whole scenario. So that is what I mean. But I must tell you, Pradanya, Pradanya, uh, this is a. Uh, this is not the reality as of now. Being a motherhood and getting a job, it is not. It is like a far-fetched uh, uh, ambition and uh, utopian world, as we call it. Like it's, uh, it's we are yeah. far, far, far from that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree absolutely. So, um, yeah. Uh, now my question comes to that there are many, many women who are at late forties and or maybe when they are done with your, their marriage. Uh, children they want to work either they have not worked before or they have worked long time back there's a long career gap in that situation they don't know i i am meeting so many people so many women they talk about it we want to work but we don't know where to start what what am i good at what do i do uh, though we are talking about interview ready but uh, something like that how do they start how do they make their portfolio what do they write what do they look for there's a lot of reflection required. I mean, definitely when it comes to go going back to work after many, many years, you've, you've spent almost, uh, you know, part of a lifetime, like say bringing up children or just life came in the way. And now you finally feel that uh, I need a career. I, I, I want to have my own source of income and all of that. So taking stock of what you're capable of doing. And this is when I, uh, you know, I speak to my clients and, you know, the, the people who get in touch is that at the end of the day, just put yourself into the empl employer's shoes. And that would give a lot of clarity in terms of they would want to hire you for something that you can handle with little to no supervision. So chances are you might have to go back to upskill yourself a little bit, you may have to go back and understand what is it that I have in me. And I would probably even reiterate the, the principle of Ikigai that, you know, what do you have? What do you need? What can you get paid for? What are you so good, right? And what are you going to enjoy? Because uh, honestly, uh, I also see people who, you know, who've taken that break, especially women. And when they come back, 
oh am i being fair to my children um, you know is this the right time for me to do this i could have waited for a few more years and you know all of that so reflection to be sure that yes i'm ready now but then a lot of reflection a lot of uh, you know upskilling a uh, lot of building your confidence back again because uh, you may be seeing yourself that you know life is all sorted now but when you start imagining yourself in a workplace you are, you suddenly start feeling all anxiety what will happen everybody will be younger to me i'd be you know older so all of that so a lot of work in a work would also be required to make sure that you're ready your your corporate ready your job ready so yeah some of my thoughts i would love to hear from pradanya sir so i think uh, mitra that's a very very wonderful question actually um, and i would probably want to just uh, cite a very small example of case study and very rightly you know i had one of my client in the same age group like you rightly mentioned 40 plus her kids were back to you know a high, higher secondary school and uh, she is free she's been on a break for a very longer time um i think one especially in this this age group and this kind of a special special case right when women want to come back one of the aspects that they really have to do is um, try and understand um, probably seek like aparna rightly said you know that was the first thing which was on my mind getting the clarity and doing a lot of reflection for yourself first right uh, do i really want to go back to work or do i not want to go back to work there are mm-hmm. no gray areas there it is either a yes or no right so depending upon if you have agreed to go back to work build that mindset of everything that a workplace requires and this is where i have seen a lot of my clients as well and including me i'm not saying just everybody including me there is a lot of mindset work which begins from getting that clarity which we need to do right so doing that piece of work which is the first step i would say then based on that i think upskilling is definitely like most cases is needed when i say upskilling it could either be doing a small course or mm-hmm. so in my client's case you know which i specified what she did was she actually went back to college at the age of 42 uh, she did a one year uh-huh. course uh and i i i, I would just want to case cite her example itself she did a one year course and in that one year course you know what she realized is that what her skill set was she had got probably a different passion towards it now what happens is we must have worked in some area for say 10 years 12 years but even we evolve with time we, we even evolve with life right and at that point in time there is something else that probably re- you resonate with so she realized she had a lot of passion for teaching especially in that area of economics and stuff through and this she realization came to her only after she picked up the course had she not picked up the course maybe she would not have so then after that she got this clarity that no i want to probably possibly go back as a professor or you know assistant professor in a college and work in that specific area so then she started so one step at a time so it's important to get that clarity first build second build the mindset of you know that you will want to go back to work and then taking small baby steps towards it i think is very important because like this thing rome was not built in a day so it's not possible that we would somebody would find a job in a day only if you so upskilling themselves once you upskill then you would have different kind of a clarity from there then trying and networking with people and seeing who are doing similar kind of work talking to them and understanding what the job market is now because it would have been very different from what it was 6 years ago 7 years ago 10 years ago what is up there uh, being a, a very important aspect now in the virtual world like sipping thoughts there are a lot of platforms where you can be a part of get connected with women understand what the job market is and uh, keep yourself updated you know after you upskill yourself and then of course there on its the resume building and stuff absolutely i just wanted to add yeah. one more thing that you know along with everything to dinya said such uh, you know relevant points is that after you going back to work uh, you know let's say after many years of fasting and going back start making those lifestyle changes because you've had a uh, busy day you've been doing household stuff you've been taking care of family or you know whatever it is that's been taking uh, your uh, day uh, now you would have to make room again for probably a 9 to 5 or a part time or a freelance so now slowly start thinking about what lifestyle changes you're going to make so that you'll finally have room 
and you're ready to dedicate yourself to that job you know there's like pradanya said there are no gray areas because one of the reasons why uh, you know employers hesitate again or to understand is this how are you going to make room for this you're used to this right so be ready with an answer but more than that make those those changes in your day to day life so that you're it's it's a fit at the end of the day of what they're looking for and what you have to offer yeah that's a, that's a good great points you both have added and the time is running out we still have some points but i think we will take it in the next session but yes networking is very important knowing what kind of a jobs are there for uh, uh, coming after gap years is very important then you know that uh, what am i looking at what can what skill should i know yeah that's very true harshita do who is do you have any audience questions because uh, we have 5 minutes 10 minutes we have uh, nidhi has one question Yep. Yeah, I am unmuting you. Please go ahead and ask your question. Maybe she has some difficulty in unmuting. Uh, anybody else? We have questions. Um. Yeah, there was one uh, question by Shweta. She was asking uh, how to build that first impression uh, in the interview. um okay should i take it yes, yes please go ahead apna okay all right so how do you make the first impression i think one of the most underrated things is your smile uh your posture again you know a beat a face to face interview or a virtual interview uh something i was reading recently and i also highly recommend is that whatever your your inner dialogue is before the interview that's going to make a big difference in your first impression as well so if you've been going on telling yourself that oh i'm going to mess it up i'm you know i know it but what if i don't get it and all of that it just comes off when you start to talk or when you you know make your presence felt also your attire especially in uh, keeping in mind in your virtual interview is that please dress for the interview from your head to toe this whole uh, logic of only dressing up what's seen in front of the camera uh, without even realizing it is it is not getting your interview mindset prepared it's like uh, you would end up feeling casual this is very subconscious it's not even that you're intentional about it but just so that when you're prepping for an interview be it virtual or face to face uh, prepare like you would for a face to face i'm i'm saying okay don't spend so much time deciding what shoes to wear but at least make sure that that you know you're <laughs> you're confident uh, and uh, i i would give a lot of credit to smiling right not over smiling not being very stiff and uh, you know letting this in, uh, conversation flow so uh, something that i always tell people who get in touch about interview is that go in thinking that you're going to have one of the best conversations uh you're going to talk about what you're good in they're going to talk about what they're looking for and both of you are going to have a conversation where you see whether you fit or not so you also are sitting on an equal chair it's not that somebody is going to give you a job so they are higher up and you're not you're both equal both of you have something to offer it's a transaction so go in thinking that you're going to have the best conversation and two things happen either you get a job or you've created such a wonderful impression that in future this person gets in touch and gives you something i've had wonderful opportunities where you know some of my past interviewers have become clients now and have attended workshops and it's 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 amazing how your network gets enhanced somebody who's very junior in hr today has gotten in touch tomorrow this person is going to be general manager in hr you definitely want those uh, you know connects to be there in your network so first impression means a lot of mindset work before it's not just about what you're wearing and uh, you know how you're showing up it's what you're doing with yourself just before that camera turns on so that would be my answer great points up and i just want to add one one point to it i really loved what taparna you have shared the entire points just one point which i want to add especially now because of covid i wanted to yeah. specify this is that the other person like i mentioned earlier who's interviewing you the interview is also a human being yes. so very rightly that he or she must have also must be going through ups and downs of life so the, to create along with what aparna rightly mentioned along with all those aspects what i would definitely possibly is ask the person how are you doing Yes. How did you have? How how has your day been? Is it been good? Not been good? How is it? I mean, uh, these are subtle human connections where you know, uh, asking the interviewer not just because you are on the other side of the chair like Aparna rightly mentioned, um, doesn't mean you just have to 
possibly act as you know for somebody who wants a job right you can yes. you can ask the person how are you doing how how is your day been you know is everybody okay in terms of these tough times in your family and friends because a lot yeah. of people are losing their loved ones so empathizing in that situation and making that connection is the first impression that i feel up, along with all the things that aparna has mentioned yeah it's so rare this doesn't get spoken about so much the Correct. stress an interviewer yes. goes through uh, you know before getting into the interview right? you have to this needs to be spoken up i think the interviewer also need to stand But up for that yeah aparna you rightly mentioned aparna and pradhanya i somehow again it, it's it's a very fine line that where yeah, you are yeah. trying to be too familiar yeah. or where you are trying to be nice like uh, correct correct it correct. it is so this is again um, uh, people should know that okay this much is fine that's a protocol yeah. so uh, yeah. you are safe you uh, otherwise i feel ki why are you trying to be too friendly to me i know i yeah. agree true, true. so yes. again so i was come back to it in some session where we teach this art of how much is uh, too much correct absolutely yeah. Yeah, so I was just coming from the context of the interviewee is the candidates knowing that you know what Sadhanya said the person on the other side is a human. Of course, the approach has to be professional, but just in your head, I'm going to meet a person who also equally feels responsible to find the right candidate. So it's not that just to take off that intimidation a little bit that okay, I'm going to get judged and evaluated today. The other person's also taken time off to sit in front of you. Uh, I have very rarely seen you know, of course, there are. good interviewers who prep for the interview and then there are people who just go in okay who's the candidate give me the resume tell me and and that's it the interview starts right so again you're sitting in front of a human no, so just i tell you on this that realization aparna yeah. what happens again i'm coming from interviewer's perspective yes uh, technology i learned few years back i uh, uh, 4 5 years back before that somebody used to talk about technology the software that software i used to get intimidated mm. i want you wanted to learn about before meeting the candidates but not everything you would know because that was never your field so obviously yes the interviewers also get intimidated so chill relax right right, right. go by your gut in the, yeah. yeah so we have just five we are uh, four yeah. minutes we have uh, uh, harshita which one uh, a very can... very quick question very very quick answer yeah one last question from sheetal she's hmm. a very um, Uh, Nidhi, uh, Nidhi, also there is a question. Uh, so Sheetal and Nidhi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable guidance. I want means I have one question that whenever people said that whenever the uh, interviewer ask us to introduce yourself, so don't speak about what you have already mentioned in your resume. Means I my name is this. I am from this. I am doing this one. So what points we should. Uh, Uh, tell to that uh, interviewer. Then when they ask us, uh, introduce yourself in short. That's a lovely Elevator question. Page. Elevator. <laughs> that's yes. That's a lovely question, and uh, I think Meeta has answered it really well. It's just that yes, do not repeat what is mentioned in your resume. Do not get into your personal details. Nobody wants to know how many dogs you own. I've literally had people tell me that this is the number of siblings, the number of dogs I have. uh you go in using that as an opportunity to start the conversation right by proving it's an opportunity for you to show your fit to the role tell me about yourself that's the only intention to ask you the question is that you answer it in a way where you're talking about your skills achievements and tie it back very beautifully to the job description tie it back to the candidate profile tie it back to some of the keywords that you might have noticed in the job description before you even applied so uh, i would definitely definitely say that you know, and, and prepare this answer you know that you're going to get this question 99.9% chances that this is going to be the first question of course after the ice breaking is done that you know just tell me about yourself so this is one question of course along with other behavioral questions prep yourself give yourself not more than a minute don't go around rambling be very specific talk about your skills achievements and dive back to the role i think you would have just made a very wonderful start to the interview that's my recommendation of course fantastic aparna uh, we will just take last tips from uh, you both because we have one minute to go and the questions we couldn't take please put uh, join our whatsapp group put the questions there we will direct to our experts these two lovely experts and we will get back to you with the answers so your last takeaways 
giveaways, basically, the what you would like to tell the audience, both of you. Prepare for your interview and prepare yourself. Please do a lot of mindset work. Trust me, you've got this. It's not interviews are not a very uh, you know as intimidating as it is as you feel it is to be, right? So you would find the opportunity that is right for you, and they'll also select the candidate who is the right fit. So trust that process, but do a lot of mindset work. Build your self worth. Do not think that your interviewer is someone right above you, and you're just someone uh, seeking an opportunity and 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 feel that you're somewhere lower in the cadre. Go in with your with a lot of confidence. Smile. Be yourself, and uh, always think that you'll either come out with a job or a wonderful addition to your network. And that's it. That's interviews for you. That's my you know, you know last points if at all. Yeah. Wonderful, Aparna. <laughs> wonderful, Aparna. <laughs> Right. So I think the first thing that I would want to say, especially when it comes to interviews, believe you can do it and you're halfway there. Right. There's this quote, isn't it? So just believe that any kind of a job that you really want to take up, believe you can do it. A uh, lot of I mean, there are many aspects to it, but a few takeaways is like first, uh, any job that you apply, like, a, like a, I mean, we have been discussing over time and again is that answer your why and get that clarity for why. Right. The first aspect. The second aspect is that do a bit of a research in terms of your industry, your skill set. Try and understand what is uh, what is the pay scale that is there. What what are the employers looking at in this current scenario? Because times have changed. So do do that bit of a research and up you know up, update yourself. Keep yourself updated in terms of what is already there. Uh, third, I think we've been again up and I mentioned it is the mindset. You know, do a lot of mindset work. that is where that believing factor comes into picture uh, you know saying that yes this is the job that i'm going to be applying and i am going to completely give my heart and soul in preparing for it from all aspects it could be technical non technical both both the aspects um that's the third aspect that i would say and fourth uh, aspect which is very very important is i would say network networking is a huge aspect these days uh, network with a lot of people understand uh what is happening in the job market how you can keep yourself updated whether it could be writing cvs whether it could be writing your cover letters uh these days in fact i i think i missed out mentioning people are also looking at video introduction right so it's important to keep yourself updated i think linkedin has come up with a with the option i just saw where you can have your uh, you know profile picture as i don't know what's the time limit but there's a short video which you can upload to yourself so keeping yourself updated for such things right because everybody there's no huge competition out there so third uh, fourth aspect network and understand uh, what actually the you know uh, the industry and the employer is looking at so that you can you can be up to the that par which is there so that they, yeah. these are some of the things that yeah. and just one last thing i know meeta is going to tell us that please let's end it now you know times running out but just because it's a, just because it's a women's forum and i see a lot of people pleasing behavior not being able to create boundaries and everything especially when it comes to your jobs and interviews stay as far away as possible from people who doubt you who pull you down and are very negative please i i have seen that happening personally professionally but especially you know uh, you know women be very mindful that and especially the day before the interview right will you get it what salary are you going to ask how are you going to manage you have a baby all that please uh, you know uh, start setting your boundaries it's not just going to help you with your interviews but with your entire career itself i think i just wanted to put it out there for anyone who needed to hear no, this today absolutely you both actually said the things and i could see the the connection the chain of it because gaslighting is a topic we want to oh yeah we want to do discuss in one of our let's talk session because what you talked about is gaslighting networking yes. is again a very very important topic that has been coming up in all our session that we sure. must network to uh, to to stay relevant yeah smile i really believe in i smile a lot all the time i smile for me uh, like my uh, last take away uh, give away or like i can sharing is honesty clarity and commitment if Absolutely. you can com- communicate these three things to the interviewer you you the chances are that you will get the job that is what i feel and um, uh, like when people feel intimidated about interview that oh my god i am nervous i must tell you that i when i do sessions it's intimidating for me also so 
we have done how many sessions we have a lot yeah. long experience in life but still so that's normal you have to just take a deep breath smile and say that doesn't matter i am giving my best so so on that note the session has to end and i must thank you both for giving insight to our audience and because they for them learning these things are very important they all want to work they all are struggling majority of the women are struggling to find a job we are very very few lucky ones who are who have a job and career so so as much networking sisterhood mm-hmm. bonding whatever we can do is like uh, yeah i don't know about yeah. others but definitely before entering the room i took a deep breath a sip of water and See. then i logged in and i'm being 100% honest here and i do that before all my <laughs> sessions before all my client discussion because every time you're entering a new experience and you just want to be very grounded and mindful so thank you so much for saying that and acknowledging that with honesty i, I love that yes. thank you I- I think that kind of you know I wouldn't take too much of time, but uh, like Meeta and you, I mean Aparna has been saying, uh, there is one people might find this really funny, but please don't. There is one song I always listen to. There's just one single song which I listen to before all my sessions. That just gets me into the mindset. Right, this is just going to be awesome. <laughs> yes, the so, song with all of us. No, so many. Yes, which is the song. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> so I was like, so have something of that sort, you know, as a mindset, uh, you know, we prepare your mindset. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so on that note, we end this session. And thank you, Aparna. Great. Thank you, Pranjanya. So thank much. you, audience, for staying with us. And next, we are coming up with next session on money because Harshita, you shared the link because finance. We are doing the next Saturday after that. We are coming up again with career session. so we will see you again and hopefully we will connect again be you will be a part of our community where our uh, audience can connect with you all we will share we have shared the details or share the detail harshita yes, everything is in chat box yeah okay thank you thank you thank, thank you, you for having us thank, thank you meeta and thank you to everyone for inviting us yeah. thank you so much